Okay, we are at section uh, 5.2, Newton's first law and inertial frames. And uh, if you haven't watched the, uh, the video on reference frames, I think it was, uh, it's at the bottom end of the chapter four module. I highly recommend it. Um, so here they're showing you the, basically a cutaway view of the of our air hockey table. And uh, if you, now this doesn't really happen, uh, but it's supposed to, if you just place the puck on a air hockey table, it's supposed to stay still. Most of us have, if you have it experienced, it kind of just kind of floats around. But if it were perfectly level and all of the jets were perfectly uniform, it would just stay still floating on top of the, uh, the, the air hockey table. Uh, so imagine you're, that, that's what we get when you just have it in your living room or something, the air hockey table or at a, a game parlor, the, the puck should stay stationary, relatively stationary. Let's say you put that on a train and a train is going at a constant velocity. Uh, well, let's start off. Let's start off. Let's say the train is, is, uh, uh, standing still it hasn't taken off yet and so the you, you know you're watching the puck and it it uh uh it's just floating there and if this train were to suddenly start to accelerate in one direction if you're there in the room it would appear that the puck would be sliding in the other direction now to someone on the ground they would see that okay the train is moving this way and the puck wants to stay in its position but you on the train it looks like that it's going backward and once the train reaches a constant velocity once again the um once again the um the puck will appear to be stationary because it's it's traveling at the same speed that the uh train is now if the train were to suddenly stop now the acceleration is negative it, it, if it's headed in this direction and stopping the acceleration this way, and it would appear to go forward. Um, I used to dangle a small ball from my windshield, uh, not, from my rear view mirror, and I called it my accelerometer. And you could tell um, if I was at a stop, if, when I would take off, the little ball would go backward if it were if I were going at a constant speed, it would just dangle there. And when I brake, it would go forward. When I would turn to the left, it would swing to the right. When I would turn to the right, it would swing to the left. It was an acceleration indicator. Um, now, it, some observer that didn't see what I was doing, they would see this ball just moving around because they are uh, – they are um, – not in the inertial frame that um, you know an, an outside observer would see what was going on, but you in the car and an observer in the car wouldn't. Well, why is that ball suddenly moving to the side? That's the idea of uh, inertial frames. And um, so, if an object does not interact with other object, it is possible to identify a reference frame in which the object has zero acceleration. Um, so the, um, even if, if, if the train is first taking off, you inside the train, you would, as it accelerates, you would see the puck suddenly go towards the back. Uh, you're not in an, in a inertial reference frame. However, the person on the side, if he could look into the train, he would see that, okay, the train's moving this way and the, the puck wants to stay put. Um, he, he's in an inertial reference frame and he would see what's going on. Uh, any reference frame that moves with constant velocity relative to an inertial frame is itself uh, an inertial frame. So that if the train is moving at constant velocity, it is indeed an inertial reference frame. Okay, and so uh, what is the inertial reference frame that we use? Uh, I'm sorry, inertial frame of reference. Uh, what is the inertial frame of reference we use? We use the Earth. Now, 
it's true that the earth is rotating and not only is it rotating, but it's spinning around the sun. Um, but compared to the gravitational pull, uh, gravitational acceleration, those, ex those accelerations are minor. So we use the earth as our inertial reference frame. Um, so, uh, Newton's first law states that in the absence of external forces and when viewed from an inertial reference frame, an object at rest remains at rest and an object in motion continues in motion with a constant velocity. That is, with a constant speed in a straight line. Okay, so an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion continues continues in motion with a constant velocity. Okay, that's a straight line motion. Now you say, well, wait a minute. The, the Earth, it's going in a almost circular orbit. Well, yes, because it, it has a, uh, it's not a straight, straight line motion. It's being pulled by the gravity of the uh, sun. Um, but when you, uh, you launch a, uh, like when they launched the Voyager satellites and once they would get their gravitational assist from some of the Jovian planets, they were moving in a straight line unless acted upon by other, uh, other planets. Okay, let's see. Which of the following statements is correct? It is possible for an object to have motion in the absence of forces on the object. Uh, the second is, it is possible to have forces on an object in the absence of motion of the object. Now, which of those is true? Well, actually they can both, both statements A and B are correct. Um, as I just said, the Voyager satellite is just, it's moving and there are no forces acting on it. There may be some uh, minor uh, gravitational forces from some distant object, but it, it's uh, very minor. Um, and the other, it is possible to have forces on an object in the absence of motion. Well, just take uh, take my laptop computer that's right here in front of me. There are forces on it. There's a gravitational force downward and there's a net force holding it up coming from the table. So it has forces on it and there's no motion. So both statements A and B are correct. Okay. Um, and that's it for that section. We'll pick it up. That was the end of section 5.2. We'll pick it up. We're going to join 5.3 and 5.4 since 5.3 is just a single slide.